remember, we're kind of new to this, so please, when you watch it, go easy. We have we have sacrificed blood, sweat, tears, and vomit for this, okay? <laughs> Welcome to the Character Sheet, comicbook.com's official home for all your tabletop and fantasy news on YouTube. Uh, my name is Christian Hoffer, and today I am joined with two members of the cast of Candela Obscura, Tide and Bone, uh, Gina Darling and Noshir Dalal. How are you both doing today? Hi, doing great. Thank you so much for having me here, having us here. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, good. this absolutely. is exciting. Uh, so uh, you two are both uh, cast members of the upcoming uh, chapter of Tide and Bone, uh, which is, you know, as I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. It, this is the third chapter. We've had a little bit of time to see the gameplay in action. The The core rule book has just come out. Uh, so mm -hmm. my first question for you is what was your experience with Candela Obscura like? What was it like <laughs> actually getting to play the game? <laughs> no, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go? <laughs> uh, why don't you take point on this? You're the veteran here, so of the two. Oh gosh, no. Uh veteran is not <laughs> the word to actually describe me at all. Uh in a few words, I can probably um describe it as uh nerve-wracking, uh very fulfilling fun and uh but also still very it was you know it was a riveting experience that was also scary at the same time but all around it was just so so incredible the whole cast and crew is absolutely sensational to work with um it, you're you're in a room full of people with just an astounding amount of talent um and you you get reminded of it every day from hair and makeup to wardrobe to uh, crew behind the scenes to the actual cast itself. It was a very remarkable experience. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, Nashir, um, <clears throat> both of you, actually, this is not your first stint on Critical Role. Both of you appeared in the Mortal Kombat <laughs> 1 <laughs> uh, one shot. So what was it like going from, you know, that, which was all sorts of kooky fighter fun, uh, to to a uh, classic horror experience crafted by uh, Abria Iyengar. Oh man! Well, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the MK the MK one one shot was, I mean, kind of hilariously crazy fun, um, and was a bit of a switcheroo for me because, I mean, Sam rocks it out as Johnny Cage, and he was, <laughs> I, I mean, he is Johnny Cage. Oh, my God. <laughs> I still have that autographed uh, headshot, photo. <laughs> but um, he he's so. I mean, everyone in that in that room and on that table was so talented. But um, it it kind of uh. He totally he totally set me up because when you see his work at the table for Candela, like what um, what a complete one eighty. Um, I, I think it's really cool to watch to watch like i think in both cases we were at tables with masterful storytellers um and we got to do some really light-hearted fare and then um candela came around and all of a sudden like we're getting into some uh some really <laughs> like heavy heartbreaking stuff and um to watch everyone make that transition I mean, it was a a master class for me you know what i mean so yeah no. Yeah, the uh, the the Mortal Kombat shot was, it was it was so kooky. It was so much fun. It was ridiculous, and that's what I I lean more towards comedy improv more than anything. That's my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So to be thrown into Candela was uh, <clears throat> it was a very it's almost like shell shock, you know. Like it's you try so hard to fight against all your instincts of uh, comedy and making everything just so goofy. No, no goofing is what we were told. Like stop goofing, <laughs> um, and it was so hard because there's so many there's so many moments, especially with Sam throwing in just little quick things mm -hmm. uh, during Candela where we try oh, not man. to react to it. Um, it, it was yeah. it was a challenge. It was a it was definitely a challenge. How how can you be told no goofing when you're in a cast with Sam Regal? Exactly. Oh, and he gets <laughs> it in there. Like, make no mistake, he gets it in there. But mm -hmm. he'll like, you know, he'll make you laugh, and then he, you'll like damn near break your neck doing that like whip take <laughs> when he like pulls out some like serious gravitas. And it was um, it was it was rude, man. He, he <laughs> just um, it was cruel. Yeah, I mean like. It's one thing to 
I think, admire the critical role team from a distance and kind of, you know, as a storyteller from afar, watch them and go like, wow, that's some like incredible work. It's a totally, totally different thing to watch everyone in both at both tables do some masterful storytelling like and turn on a dime. I mean, my experience with Gina on the MK1, I was like, oh man, she's funny. And like, oh. and fast, you know, like she was coming up <laughs> and I, I was like, I'm gonna just stay in character as Rain and be like angry as hell because that's pretty much all I can do at this table. <laughs> and um, uh, so when it came to Candela Obscura to watch Gina make that transition um, was so, so inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. She she brings so much uh, love and grounding to the character she plays. And I, I learned a lot watching her. So, I mean, that whole table was a master class. But, Gina, you are you are awesome. So oh, thank you, <laughs> oh that's so sweet. It's, oh, it was a gift. You, you know, it was um, <clears throat> it, you uh, watching this year. Here's the thing. In this year and I had a conversation after we were all done. Oh. And, I think I asked him, I was like, so how long have you been doing this? He's and he said, It's my first time. <laughs> besides MK1, yeah, yeah. Yeah, besides MK1. And I I like wanted to walk into the ocean. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean it's your first time? I don't know how how detailed I can get into um game zero where we sat down, we talked about our character builds mm -hmm. and what yeah. we came up with. Um but uh, we did game zero where everyone sat around. We were building out our characters. We were, you know, uh, we were, you know, sh shooting ideas out. And then it went, you know, Abria went around the table and said, okay, what does everyone have? I'm over here like, okay, I think I may have a name and like a, a basic <laughs> background of who my character is. And then she goes to Nosh and she goes, all right, what do you have? This man gave a 30 minute monologue. <laughs> Deep lore. I know his character's uh, zodiac sign. I know his character's birth date, his pet name, his first pet name. And I just sat there like, oh my God. I, wait, am I allowed to, what, is this PG 13? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the first minute, you can curse as much as you want. Oh, oh thank God. Oh, okay. Oh, God. I, I, I sat there, I was like, I, I ain't shit. And I, I like feverishly looked through my papers, my blank papers. <laughs> To figure out, oh my god, what am I gonna do? And and um, it's 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 very it, it was really there's a very stark contrast between Nosh's character and how he is in person. Mm -hmm. Um, in the trailer, you see he has these gash marks across his scalp. He looks menacing. The the snarl that he does can like can launch a thousand ships. <laughs> all right, but then. Every day he comes in and he sneaks in boxes of donuts for the cast and crew, boxes of like very lovely pastries from uh, one of our favorite bakeries <laughs> out here, just the sweetest angel in the whole entire world, but plays this absolutely menacing and just rich character that he has. So you were, you were an actual, you were an absolute spectacle. Uh, what is it? A, a vision oh. this year. You were incredible. That's awesome, Gina. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So and first time too. What the hell? Yeah. So let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that. What do you mean this is your first time? Like so you're you're a, like a tabletop RPG noob? Is that uh right? so back in like junior high, I'd played a handful of games with um, you know, some of my junior high school friends. Um, and it was mainly me sitting around like while people discussed like you know, Thacko and stuff. And, you know, like you always had the guy at the table who was there to do like hardcore trig. And it was like, oh, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. And like, all I wanted to do was go and have fun. And um, it was a, but that was my first time playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I, um, I really fell in love with it. But like, I, I mean, I guess Gene will, testify this like i i guess i've always had a bent for like like storytelling and like examining like the darker side of human nature and um uh i guess dungeons and dragons was the first time i got to like explore that because i i i was i had no interest in being an actor back then i was you know a full-on nerd with no i mean 
if I had been, you know, hanging out with my friends back then, and you told me what I was going to be doing now, I, I, I would have never believed it in a hundred years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a trip. So, and so you're damn uh, good at it. Damn uh, yeah. good. So coming into a game like Candela Obscura, then, you know, was was it easy for you to pick up then, like to understand like the rules? Because it's really geared towards, you know, it's a sim more simpler system than like something like D&D &D or anything like that. Um, well, I think. So actually, uh, being brought in for the MK1 one shot was super, super valuable for me because um I spent a lot of time in the MK1. Like when you're done playing a game, you you kind of look back on mm -hmm. what you did and like how did it go. And you know, as a storyteller, I was also like, well, did I did I do good character work and did I tell good stories? Um, and I, God, I'm so nervous. I don't do interviews. I'm like, my, oh. stomach, my stomach is roiling. Um, but uh, I. Uh, I, I spent a lot of like kind of in my debrief later, I was like, wow, I spent a lot of time focused on the rules, mm -hmm. you know, and the one promise I made myself when I found out I was going to be a part of Circle of Tide and Bone was, um, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to get like hung up on the rules. And actually, um, I mean, in the MK1 one shot, Marisha was so the rules for that game really allowed her to take good care of all of us but especially like the noob mm -hmm. um and then abria i mean she god i i love her she's mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. she's amazing and um i think she knew i was super super nervous and that it meant a lot to me yeah um and she really went out of her way to create um kind of a a safe space where i could you know, really explore character. And she even, I think, Gina, correct me if I'm wrong, at the table, she was even like, I don't want you guys worrying about like, can I roll this thing? Or does this perk mean I can I, like, yeah. tell me what you want to do. Like, let's stick with story. Tell me what you want to do. And if there's something that like, requires that analytical side, I will handle it. And that yes. took a huge onus off of me and allowed me to kind of focus on what I was there to do, which is character and story um and you know losing my mind watching gina and all these others kick ass it was it was crazy <laughs> but, you know just i'm just going to point out having watched the mk you know one one shot i would have never realized that you were new to new to this 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 world i mean no, you uh, did a fantastic job on that uh, you know, I just assumed that you must have been like playing in like home games with all these folks for mm -hmm. years because. Oh, you know, man. Yeah, I, I wish. No, I I was I mean, I'm nervous right now. Like I I got so sick before the MK1 shooting and then like I threw up before every single Candela <laughs> shoot. I was <laughs> I was so scared. Um, I was so scared. Like, I, I mean, in a wonderful way, like I just like. It's it's such an amazing world and like I'm a big HP Lovecraft fan and it, okay. essentially it feels like you know Candela feels like HP Lovecraft were kind of wading into Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. and I love that and the world that um Roe and Spencer and the rest of this team has made is um rich and vibrant and dark and um and it, I wanted to do it justice you know what I mean um, yeah but uh. Yeah, it was it was a great time. And and I mean, like Gina kind of went out of her way, especially in those first days to make me feel welcome. And I, I wasn't shy about the fact that I was nervous as hell. And um, and I, I think I leaned on her a lot. So <laughs> thank oh. you, Gina, for that. Oh, no, thank you. You were uh, like it was like, like we said, it was um, there wasn't an inkling of an idea that you were new to this or nervous at all. You were remarkable. Uh, you actually you went in there and you rocked the whole table um and it's it's funny that you say that you leaned on me because i was a mess the whole week um i had the worst uh what is it um imposter syndrome the whole week it's really funny oh because man you know, I, it's a very strange thing so i i'm i'm fairly new to ttrpgs i started about two years ago i was on the uh my first D and D game was on national television. We had the first uh, Dungeons and Dragons television show. Yeah, uh, yeah, in the world, yeah. Uh, invitation invitation party. party. Yeah, shout out wow. to uh, G Four, rest in peace. 
And <laughs> but that was fine for me because I was amongst my castmates and we were doing comedy uh, improv and it was great. And I did all these. And then I was not expecting to be thrown into critical role that fast. Mm -hmm. um, and me being who I am, I rarely do research on who I'm working with, what I'm doing. I let my agent do that. And he just tells me, hey, you know, go have fun. But in the, you know, in chatter around the scene, I always heard critical role, critical role. So I knew critical role was huge. Um, it wasn't until the day. No, it, was, yeah, it wasn't until the day after our MK shoot that I found out how fucking huge it was. <laughs> <laughs> One, because... Um, funny story one of my friends that works there uh she texted me saying hey you know i saw some behind this did you put in a good word to my boss and i said who's your boss and she goes gina <laughs> you were sitting right next to him i'm like travis the cool dude like the cool voice actor guy and she's like gina that's the ceo and i <laughs> christian i nearly shat myself okay oh my I god i was at the table for that moment and that was yeah. a trip that oh was awesome. my god and then so um like i said i like i i have a terrible time with knowing people or understanding adhd what can you do mm -hmm. um and then so when the mortal kombat uh, one shot released it did wonderful and then when um and i saw the numbers and everything i was like oh crap what did i get myself into and they 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 approached me and said we want you in candela i'm like are you sure <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? This is totally different than what I usually do. And they said, yes. And that week of shooting Candela, I was in my head. I even called Abria at one point. I was like, hey, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. It was after episode one. We filmed episode one. I'm like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Um, all of these people are so good because I met them as Sam Regal, the really funny guy. Um, Travis, the really funny, cool like voice actor guy. Liam, I had just met. Um, oh. And Ashley... You know, she, she's incredible. I didn't realize she played a huge part in the beginning of my career, actually. And hanging out with everyone, spending time having lunch with them, you see how much work they put into Critical Role. They weren't just the faces of it. They mm -hmm. sat there, they were writing, they were doing uh, marketing stuff. They, like, it was so astounding just watching them work. And I realized I am in over my head and I was dead nervous every day. I texted abria all the time and up until like the last episode i didn't know that nosh was also feeling this i thought it was just <laughs> me i'm like i'm the newbie i out of everyone i'm not a writer i'm not really i don't you know sit down and write i'm not a storyteller i just go balls to the wall and see what happens mm -hmm. um and it was just a, a blur and but it was it was still so much fun and very very inspiring to watch unfold i mean I'm I'm just absolutely shocked that both of you guys are are like new to this because I've I've seen both of your work before, you know, with the one shot invitation to party. I would have never guessed this in a million years. You guys, you know, have taken to this space so well. I just like that. I just assumed you guys have been doing it for a while, and you know, they they finally figured a way to get you guys on. This is, this is fantastic. Um, and I think it's a and, huge credit to Critical Role too. Like, talk about um. I mean, talk about taking the thing you love mm -hmm. and turning it into like an enterprise. And I, like, I can see, I can see the thing you love becoming work, um, yeah. being really hard and like, make no mistake, like they are working, you know, but, um, that place is the most actor centric, like that was as close to Disneyland as I don't, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to compare anything else to it i mean makeup wardrobe like they they did everything they could to support us and and showcase us at our best it was um a real credit to them that you know we we did a, i think as well as we did they certainly brought out our potential i'll say that much do you oh, think so gina that, that place is a well-oiled machine <laughs> my yeah. goodness everything is on time done on point they like they didn't skimp on anything shout out to the hair and makeup team and our wardrobe team my goodness jen was incredible to work with she you tell her you want one thing she'll bring 15 variations of it um everyone from cast and crew behind the scenes everyone works 
so hard and and it shows it really shows um and not only that the the audience their fan base is Mm -hmm. so full of love uh it wasn't until the mortal kombat one shot that i learned that they were called the critters and i'm (laughs) about just melted into myself that is the cutest name in the world and they they they're just so sweet you know every time i talk to someone about being nervous about it i was always told don't worry the critters are a very wholesome crew they will love you and that just made me feel so much better so let's talk a little bit more about <clears throat> like the actual the, the actual season um so we we can't get into spoilers too much but what are some of the themes that you guys were trying to explore as you were sitting at the table for this chapter hmm <laughs> Oh God! How do we do this and not spoil things? I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> what are the vibes? The vibes were like super dark, bro. Like hella dark. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was a lot more, uh, a lot more dark and brooding and bloody than oh. what I'm used to when I'm playing uh, TTRPGs. Um, it was the vibes were very serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like I'm envisioning just color black. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vanta black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, you know, can can we talk a little bit about your guys' uh, characters? You know, again, have to stay spoiler light here, but you know, sure. um, what 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 uh, you know, what was your general approach to you know creating a character? What were you trying to do with your characters going into this game? Oh, I want to hear Gina's take on this because <laughs> I, I watched her. I, I like I watched her sit like. Uh, I, I'm not even gonna. I, I gotta talk. <laughs> Gina, do, 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 do the thing. Holy shit! Um, so you guys that have seen awesome. the trailer. You guys have seen the photo. You see that my character, she is uh, dressed to the T. I mean, jewelry, gold everywhere. Mm. I I went into wardrobe telling her, Jen, I want this woman to look rich as fuck. <laughs> Like, I want her to look like you couldn't touch her unless you had, like, 16 Bugattis, you know? <laughs> um, but still classy. Like, very classy. She Every every character that I've made in any show that I've been in is a part of me, a, a, a part of who I am in every corner of my mind. And this one, I see, listen, I saw the budget, and I was like, I can finally bring this one out. <laughs> <laughs> um so we we were going for a very very old school jazz club kind of look um Mm -hmm. she is elegant she is you can tell she takes wonderful care of herself that is her her main focus um she does not leave the house with a hair out of place and i really really wanted to capture that um and I I think I think we really I think we really knocked it out of the park. I mean the 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 whole beauty department did such a wonderful job at bringing her to life, and they played a huge part of making me absolutely fall in love with my character mm-hmm. and um, making her come to life. I would go in there and I tell them, you know, her story. This is who she is. This is what she looks like. This is what this is how she thinks, and they just absolutely nailed it. When. You know, talking about the costumes and a little bit, you know, that's obviously different from like the the main, you know, critical role show is the the costumes. And you know, both of you, you know, you know, Nashir, you're a you're a voice actor. Gina, you're a, a, you know, do a lot of improv and comedy. How how does like you know, kind of putting on the costume? How does that help you get into the role? And how how does that differ from your like typical experience? Because you're still doing a lot of improv. You're you're still drawing upon a lot of your usual talents. It's like putting on Iron Man suit. Um, the moment I even put on her dress and her furs, I am her. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no, like, what would she do? It, it was, what would I do? Like I said, she is a part of me. Um, and it was, it was, it was a very, it was very comfortable slipping into her, uh, her role. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it was almost like, um. It's like, you know, it's like it's like Batman's suit. Yeah. Like it's a part of me. It, it is who I am. And it was just f- so 
it was so uh, almost, uh, what is it, liberating to be able mm -hmm. to see her in person and not just have her sit in the back of my mind. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and can I also say, I think, um, I mean, you, if you've seen the, the trailer, you've seen Gina in all her splendor. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think a less capable performer could have fallen into that becoming um, a trope, you know, or, or a stereotype. And I think one of the things I really love about Gina's character is um, she's so much larger than life, but at n kind of like, I mean, it's funny that Gina mentioned Batman, like Batman doesn't work without Bruce Wayne, mm -hmm. you know? And similarly, uh, Gina's character doesn't work without the girl that's kind of like deeply like hidden under layers and layers of who Gina's character has become. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she never, she never lost sight of that. So like all of these crazy decisions happening, like kind of in the moment and on the fly, um, ah, I'm going to get emotional just thinking about it. Like, oh, <laughs> like, um, you know, our, our, we're, we're always informed, not by like, uh, the idea of who her character is, but like, um, like, who she is, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and uh, it was, uh, that was, uh, well, intimidating and like really <laughs> beautiful to watch, you know? Um, it was super cool, it was super cool. Uh, Nashir, about your character, were there any like roles that you passed for that you've done that you kind of like drew upon? That was uh, a role hot. It was so <laughs> crazy. Oh my God. Like you look at, you see the video, you look at him, you're like, I can fix him. <laughs> uh, um, well, uh, I, I guess uh, kind of like what Gina said, I think uh, every role I've ever played is a is a facet of myself, right? Okay. Otherwise, um, otherwise, I think I'd end up just kind of playing at an idea. Mm -hmm. But um, I almost said his name and I was like, oh, God, they're going <laughs> to bleep me out. Um, I think uh, so we had our initial, am I remembering this right? Gina, correct me if I'm wrong. We had our kind of initial sit down where like Rowan talked us through the world and how it works. And we kind of did like a very cursory, like, let's play through it. And, you know, like, see just how, <laughs> how, how horrific, <laughs> you know, how horrific it can get. And um, I remember... Uh, flying back and I fell asleep on the plane and um, uh, essentially dreamed what would end up being the character that uh, that I brought to the table. Um, and I came home and I think I wrote like 15 pages <laughs> of, uh, of stuff and like Even sat down and like, face. I'm so shocked. Yeah. So <laughs> and like, shocked. yeah, right. <laughs> and I like sat down and I, I talked to, you know, I'm like, I'm sitting there with my wife Sharon. I'm like, okay. So like, this is like, just hear me out and i was like blah, 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 and like vomited up like all of this stuff which is essentially uh, like and then and then my wife just kind of sat there and was like what is wrong with you i <laughs> i hope you know your audience because that's some like twisted shit and um and i was like i think it'll be good and uh then i got to uh you know hq so to speak and realized i could not like sit there and talk for like an hour about my backstory so i think i truncated it from like 15 pages to six mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and even then i was like as we were going through the i was like oh, i'm talking for a long long time i oh, need no. to stop was, i need to it stop was, it was riveting it was it was, everyone was at the edge of their seat it was wonderful you know, given was, given the scars that your your character you know, is portrayed with and you know uh kind of kind of the 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 brooding demeanor that he kind of has would you say that he's a bit more like menacing than like some of the other characters that we've seen on candela obscure up to this point mm, um well uh i'll say first off before i before i did circle of tide and bone i did not watch either of the previous episodes because i was really scared that i would watch it be like oh my god these guys are amazing and then just bite moves all over the place you know what i mean and like just be like oh i gotta take that no no though this is a great idea so like it was really important to me that i came into it as blank as i could mm -hmm. um that being said and 
I don't know, Jeremy might be like, redact that shit. But um, <laughs> I, I think I remember writing Abria and telling her that I think for me, the theme would be like, um, like in a world where monsters are real, I still think man is the most terrifying creature out there. Um, because like a beast, a beast, you can excuse their actions because it's part of their nature. Mm -hmm. But um, man will do things that go against their own nature when driven to do so by whatever trauma, desire, ambition, right? Like um, mankind has done horrible things to each other in the name of things that normally would be good and righteous. And I think um, that was something that I thought was really fun to uh, explore, like what happens when uh, you have those burdens that you have to bear. Um, and so in, in the case of my character, like I, I remember talking to uh, Maxwell, our producer about like, you know, oh, and like, you know, I have these ideas for like scars and this and that. And, um, and, and like, maybe like, whatever tattoos and whatever and um and you know he was like so i don't think we can do any of that and then i was like i get it i'm just throwing out i just wanted to like give wardrobe and and makeup and hair like everything i could and then kind of leave their those brilliant artists to do whatever they wanted to do and they ended up doing stuff way beyond anything i had ever thought of um I remember walking out of wardrobe having fully taken on like who I was going to be at that table and um and it was uh it was transformative um it was really like I can never take credit for what happens at that table because like wardrobe hair makeup abria my peers like they all informed what I was doing as much if not more than than what i brought to it and um uh what a kind of beautiful thing to be part of such a team effort um i thought that was really really cool and my my bread and butter is actually not voiceover as much as it is uh full performance capture okay so i'm a very physical actor but normally i'm having to imagine the clothes I'm wearing and imagine the, you know, the scars or what have you. And um, so getting, not having to consume, like, you know, to have my <laughs> CPU burning with all of that <laughs> stuff because it's actually there uh, for the taking was, um was so, so liberating. It was, um it was awesome. That was a trip. Yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds fantastic um and he did it in like a full like every episode in full accent too oh, <laughs> with the voice and i said i came in like oh so we're doing accents <laughs> you get this this is all you get maybe slightly deeper <laughs> <laughs> you're oh, that geez, guy you're... at the table <laughs> I, I i don't know if people know like there's this there's one thing that i learned when i first started at ttrpgs um What's one of the hardest things to do is I'm one of those people where if I start talking to someone or listening to someone, I accidentally start picking up their accent a little. So you might see it in the episodes where it kind of comes in and out. And it's 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 so hard to control. But Nashir just like maintained like it was so it was so <laughs> smooth. It was so, so wonderful. Oh, that was a lot of fun. So it's about time to wrap things up. But I did want to ask one final question. What was it like playing with Abria? Like, you know, she is such a, you know, she she has so many talents and getting to uh, watch her do horror. What was it like? You know, um, how 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 much I, I can't even like, you know, go into it because she's doing a horror thing right now for Dimension 20. And it's like watching her work. Uh, what's it like? And, you know, did she add to the fear that you were experiencing at the table as she crafted this horror story with <clears throat> you? <clears throat> so, Abria is actually one of the reasons, uh, she played a huge role on uh, in, in me 
starting my TTRPG career uh, at Imitation of Party because uh, originally I was not on that show and I decided to hop in and watch and she was a guest on that episode and she knocked out of the park. It was her, uh-huh. it was Ify and B. Dave Walters and they did a scene that left me in tears. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were supposed to be a comedy show, but it was everyone was crying in that room. And that was the day that I called the producers and executives. I'm like, I want in on that show or else. And <clears throat> so they threw me in on a, on a, as a as a guest um, and then eventually put me on as permanent cast. So that was my introduction to Aubrey. I didn't get to play with her, but I watched her. Uh, and it was such a beautiful performance. I played with her once before we did a Comic-Con live panel D&D game. And where she was our game master, and she allowed me to hold Vecna on a leash like a little puppy. <laughs> um, shout out to Divine Intervention, best best thing that I ever did in a game. And so, you know, I know, you know, I, I've known who she is. We've worked together before, and every time I see her, it is just a ball of love and joy, and laughs, and she, and and just beauty. But seeing her do her thing in Candela was, I've, I, I didn't, I've never seen her do horror, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was so, I remember the first, the first episode, I was like, well, damn, okay, she's gonna, she's gonna kill all of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She is so, so much fun to work with. And every time I leave a, a project with her, uh, my heart aches a little bit because I never want it to end. She's so good at what she does. This is why she's earned her sp- her spot in so many shows. And I can see why this is why um, Critical Role loves her so much. It is such a treat and a pleasure to play with her uh, every time. So I always jump at the, uh, at the opportunity. If Abria calls, I answer. Uh, you left me with nothing Gina you left me with nothing (laughs) um, I think uh, there are some people that are just um, uh, supremely talented and then there are other people who are uh, a joy to be around and um, in someone like Abria you get both Um, in in, in ridiculous proportion. Uh, like Gina said, she made no bones. She's like, y'all gonna die. Like, I'm, yeah. gonna try, I'm gonna try my damnedest to like murder all y'all. And I was like, oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> Fun times, glad we're friends. But um, <laughs> uh, she, like, she, could, she could threaten our lives with one hand and yet, um, you know, uh, hold us tenderly with the other. And it was, um, uh, I don't. I don't know how you walk that tightrope. I, I'm sure years of experience and you know hundreds of hours uh, of flight time doing this kind of work helps. But um, I, I think it takes a special kind of person, and, and Abria's um, wonderfully unique mm-hmm. in that regard. What a what a beautiful monster. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And I mean that in the most, and she she would know that I mean in the most wonderful way. Well, there's, um, there's our headline right there. <laughs> yes. Honestly, yes, that's the perfect way to describe Abria. Uh, you know, she's it like uh, Nosh is so incredible at like the dark, brooding, scary, um, and he but he he's he's so he's so sweet behind the scenes. Abria can do that both on camera. <laughs> And it's like, I don't, oh man, this is kind of, it's scary, but also really hot, but you're like the sweetest thing ever, you know? Uh, she, I remember there was one day where I texted her, like, hey, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with this character. Uh, and I don't really feel good about what I'm doing right now. Like, I need, I need to, I, I uh, well, not with the character, but like at the table, I guess. Um, and immediately, like two minutes later, she, she's already calling me. She's like, all right, what's up? Let's talk about this. They're just a wonderful human being that wants the best for everyone. She wants everyone to shine. Um, and she's so, she's damn good at what she does. And it, it's, I'm, I'm really happy that in this chapter, we, we had her as our GM. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you 
very much both of you for for doing this interview this was a blast we could talk about this <laughs> all day long uh but you know I, I i only have you for 30 minutes and we went 40 so uh <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh for doing this uh candela obscura tied uh, uh, circle of titan bone uh starts up here at the end of this month uh, be sure to watch it on Critical Role. It airs on the last Thursday of the month, uh, with the VOD being on the Monday afterwards. And, of course, a uh, podcast version also available. Um, and also, uh, you know, again, uh, like and subscribe this video. Uh, we cover Candela Obscura all the time on here. Uh, so if you love the show, be sure to like and subscribe our channel. Until next time, and thank you both so much once again. Thanks for having us. And remember, we're kind of new to this, so please, when you watch it, go easy. We have we have <laughs> sacrificed blood, sweat, tears, and vomit for this, okay? <laughs>